Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are pleased to present the second edition of Library Giving Day 2020 kickoff. Uh, today, we have Brian Lawrence, Deputy Executive Director of the Seattle Public Library Foundation, and myself, Christina McPhillips from Carl Bloom Associates. Um, I'm going to throw it to Brian, but right before I do, I want to just very quickly do some brief housekeeping. Um, everyone on the line is muted, so the only way you can ask questions is in the question box, and we strongly encourage you to ask questions. In fact, a week ago when we did this webinar, we had so many questions come from uh, the audience, the listening audience, and it's really impactful to us, the planners of Library Giving Day. We want to know what you think, and we want to hear your responses to some of our questions, and if you have suggestions of things that you've done, we may read them while we're on the call today. And then if we don't get to your questions, we will attempt to answer those in our FAQ section of the librarygivingday.org website. So again, you're all muted. Please chat us your questions. Uh, we will be recording this, and it will be posted on the Library Giving Day website on uh, Friday, the 24th, so two days from now. And then one other thing that we want to encourage you to do is go now, as we're doing this presentation, as you're listening to us, to librarygivingday.org and follow along with some of the things that we are suggesting. Uh, I want everyone to know that that website was created for you as a resource for Library Giving Day. It is your one-stop shop for everything that you'll need to plan a successful event. And so with that, I'm going to throw it to my uh, colleague today, Brian Lawrence from the Seattle Public Library Foundation. Thank you, Christina. And good morning if you're on the West Coast and good afternoon uh, if you're on the East Coast. Uh, we are extremely excited to, to kick off um, planning for Library Giving Day, especially here in Seattle. It's been a great event. Um, and we hope that the, this webinar gives you an opportunity to learn a, a little bit more about uh, the campaign and how your library can participate and how we can um, collectively make an impact on our communities. Um, so uh, for our agenda today, uh, what we'll do is provide you with a brief history of, of what is Library Giving Day, how it, how it operates. Um, we'd like to convey that Library Giving Day is really an opportunity for every library to participate, whether you're um, a smaller system or a, maybe a part-time fundraiser on your team or one of the larger systems and you have a staff of um, you know, five to 10 fundraisers or whatnot, uh, Library Giving Day is an opportunity for all library systems to really expand the impact that they can have um, on the community. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some um, campaigns that were held in 2019 and share some examples of successes that, that um, were experienced by different systems. And then we'll, we'll get into the meat of how your library can build um, a successful Library Giving Day campaign and share with you some um, tools which we're so grateful to Carl Bloom for helping to create and um, uh, they're, they're just really fantastic. And then lastly, we'll talk about um, the importance of um, sharing the success of um, your Library Giving Day effort. Uh, again, this is a, a movement that uh, is gaining steam. Uh, we had a great inaugural year. And in, as we enter year two this year, uh, we really want to make sure that we um, help uh, folks understand how powerful uh, this, this day is for, for all of our systems. So uh, to give you a little bit of background on Library Giving Day, um, this uh, concept um, um, uh, was born last year, but really it kind of began in, in 2017 when um, a group of uh, really committed library systems got together um, and convened the first um, library development professionals conference. And we were really thrilled to host it here in Seattle, but it was a great opportunity for uh, library development professionals to get together, um, share learning, share ideas, um, and it really did create so much positive energy about you know, what we're going to be able to, to do um, uh, collectively as a group. Um, you know, and back in Seattle, we had a, um, a spring giving day called Give Big. Um, and it was a community giving day that, uh, you know, ultimately raised about uh, $1.7 million for our library from 2011 through 2018. And um, 
it really a, it was an all digital strategy. So it helped us, uh, it was very low cost in terms of being able to reach donors. And um, we found tremendous success with that. And there were some challenges with whether the event organizers were continuing it, were gonna continue it. So we sort of leaned on our um, fellow professionals in the library giving world and, and asked, you know, how can libraries work together to, to raise money effectively and grow philanthropy by, by looking at the tools we have, the learning, by uniting all of our, our different staffs and patrons and donors. Um, and so, uh, you know, there was a conversation with Jennifer Jones, who is in the brand new president of the Toronto Public Library Foundation. Um, and she shared what she had been doing with the Canadian school libraries. And that was really the kernel of the idea of, of creating this giving day um, specifically for libraries. Um, and I think, you know, Carl Bloom is uh, one of the key partners in this effort. Um, they really, they're a full service marketing agency. So, uh, and for Seattle, they worked with us on our direct mail, our digital marketing strategy. And, and they really embraced this idea of helping libraries um, create opportunities for giving through through these digital channels. Uh, so we knew we had the kind of the right partner to, to kick off um, and start a library giving day of our own. So a huge thank you to um, Christina and Rob and everybody at Carl Bloom for, for, for helping us um, really put library giving day together. Um, so, on the next slide, you'll see that uh, it really started with kind of the King County, King County Library System, which is based here in Washington, along with our neighbors to the south, Pierce County Library Foundation. And the three of us got together uh, along with Seattle Public Library Foundation and, and um, discussed this idea of uh, creating the Library Giving Day. Marcellus Turner, uh, Seattle's chief librarian, um, and um, he connected us to the directors of the Washington State Library System and our state librarian. And all of them were extremely enthusiastic about conducting a campaign. So our next step, we worked with PLA, ALA, um, and Outside the Lines and a bunch of different uh, industry organizations to really ask the question, is this a viable project? And are you willing to endorse and participate in it? And um, everybody immediately uh, said yes, and were willing participants. And uh, we elected to do a library giving day during the ALA Library Awareness Week. Um, so it was um, overall great. We had 20 Washington State libraries that, that signed up right away. Um, and then we wanted to uh, continue to expand that. And ultimately, um, it grew into a movement that included many uh, library systems from Canada, the US, and I think there were one or two international organizations as well um, that jumped on board. So. Um, so Library Giving Day really is uh, a day for, for all of us to, to benefit um, from uh, encouraging philanthropy. And um, it's for both rural and big city libraries. Um, last year at the fundraising conference in Calgary, we talked to a number of library systems from um, rural parts of Canada who uh, weren't able to participate for any number of reasons, whether that be staffing or resources. Um, and they heard about the success of this, this um, giving day and they are on board this year. So um, it's, it's great to see such gr uh, diversity in terms of sizes and scopes of libraries. It's for friends, for foundations, for systems, um, whatever your library structure is, if you have a place to accept donations, you can be a part of Library Giving Day. And again, whether you're a one-person shop, a multi-person team, or maybe even this is like half time of your job, you know, you do something else, library operations for 60% of your job and fundraising is one of those, what I call ampersand positions. You do that in addition to all the other things that you do. Um, library Giving Day, we're, our goal is to make this so easy for you to take um, a step into philanthropy and um, uh, to participate. And again, I, I mentioned earlier, we have, we've had participants from all over North America, um, as well as some international library systems as well. So um, it's a, it's, um, and, you know, philanthropy is growing. We've seen tremendous success from our uh, uh, fundraising uh, campaigns last year. We grew our donations by about 29%. Um, and so this is the perfect time to, to step into, to 
support another campaign. If you already do a fall campaign, it's a great way to add a campaign to your existing portfolio. So that's, that's a very quick overview of kind of what Library Giving Day is. And I'll turn it back to Christina and she can um, talk to you about some of our participants from last year. Thanks, Brian. So yes, I do want to say thank you so much to a few of the 2019 participants. And we couldn't put everybody's logo on here, but we did have so very many that participated. And I'll tell you more in a moment. But a big thank you to all of these groups. Um, we appreciate everything that you did. Uh, so we were very excited about the uh, 2019 the first ever Library Giving Day, which was on April 10th. We had 192 libraries that participated. And of those participants, when we asked for results, 78 libraries responded with results. So when I tell you that um, we had $737,000 in revenue raised from Library Giving Day, that is thanks to 78 libraries uh, providing their results. So we know that more money was raised out there. That was really wonderful. And we know that libraries, collectively they told us that they had projected to raise you know five thousand here ten thousand here maybe just a thousand here and all of that combined they had expected to raise uh just under six hundred thousand dollars but when we added up what they actually did raise they raised seven hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars so that was really wonderful and again it was small medium and large libraries you know um what brian was saying if you're a small shop if you're a large shop Library Giving Day is for you, and it is for you to make uh, of it what you will. And again, it's for the systems, the friends, the foundations, and, and that's who participated last year, too. So all of these participants and numbers are really from a diverse, diverse set of libraries. Um, and so let's talk about really why you're here, how your library can build a successful Library Giving Day. We know that you want to understand and know what you can do. So as I kind of said at the top of the call, the most important thing for you to do is spend time on librarygivingday.org. This is your one-stop shop for everything Library Giving Day. You know, go through all the tabs, spend some real time here, ask your colleagues to do the same. The most important thing that I want to point out to you is the Campaign Tools tab. And with that, you want to go under there and you want to download the toolkit. The toolkit is a PDF. It's pretty long. It's, uh, I think, about like nine or 10 pages. Read through it. It has every single thing that you need for Library Giving Day. It's going to tell you how to run a campaign, when to start planning. It's going to talk to you about press releases, how to frame the things that you do. It's going to give you um, actual samples of tweets and Facebook posts and things like that that you can do. And then also under campaign tools, you can download logos and art. Um, you can uh, download logos and art, and then I'll talk to them in a minute about the sample marketing materials that you can access too. But once you've downloaded the toolkit, you really wanna get with your team. You wanna identify the team members that will help and plan and execute Library Giving Day. And let me pause there because yes, you may be a one person shop. You might be the whole team. But if you have a board or you have librarians or other people that you can get um, to engage in this and really support um, Library Giving Day, then that is also your team member. And those are important people. So identify who the key players are and what roles they will play. If it's your board and you want your board to make a special library giving day gift, um, that's, that's an important thing too. If you want the librarians and the library staff to advocate on behalf of library giving day, that's very important. So really create a timeline about what you're going to do and who's going to do it. And then I think you should be all set. And don't forget to meet regularly. Now, something that I do want to point out is evidence of planning in advance we asked people for results or asked libraries for results last year. And when it came to the number of weeks the libraries had from when they started planning versus the total campaign revenue. So, you know, those that only planned for zero to two weeks or two to four weeks or four to six weeks or six to eight weeks, 
we saw the most revenue generated from libraries that spent eight to 10 weeks planning what they were going to do. So they really kind of sat down at this time of year, at the end of January 2019, and said, here's what our campaign is going to look like, and we're going to spend the next 10, eight to 10 weeks promoting this. And those were the organizations that saw the most revenue come in. So I want to say, you know, sit down, plan what you're doing now. The evidence is here that you will probably generate more money um, and you would likely generate more awareness about Library Giving Day and that will continue to benefit you. If I, if I could so, just jump in, Chris, Christina, real quick. Oh, and just please. Say, yeah. Uh, you know, even if you, uh, for some reason, we heard a lot of people learn about Library Giving Day last year at, at relatively close to the last minute, um, it's still a good idea, no matter what your timing plan, time frame is to jump in and, and participate in the activity because anything that you do this year can be used next year. So over time, campaigns just get easier and easier to replicate. So um, all your planning this year will definitely benefit you next year as well. Excellent point. And I think to that point, do not feel like you have to put a ton of pressure on yourself while we want to encourage you to run a really robust campaign, Brian is exactly right. Whatever you do this year, you can build on it so much more next year. And, and I'd like to use Giving Tuesday as an example. When Giving Tuesday really first came about, I think it was around 2011, not many people knew about it. But when you consider that it's been around for you know just a few years, the momentum has built and it's a national day of giving. And I think that Library Giving Day is very much like that too. So do what you can this year. If you're able to run a really robust campaign, congratulations on that, it's great. If you're able to do one or two things, that's also really great. And next year you can build on it. So yes, Brian, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, I want to say that our step four recommendation is build your case for support. Showcase and share what your library does. And this information can be found on librarygivingday.org. So, you know, talk about the wonderful things you do. Educate your public about why they should be giving to you. Make your case for support. And perhaps somebody doesn't know that you help with job applications or interviewing skills. And once they do find that out, they might be wowed and want to give a gift. So build your case. Brian, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, and I would also say, you know, as you lead up to Library Giving Day, continue to reinforce um, the messages for, you know, like create a cadence and a, a um, sort of a social media emphasis leading up to Library Giving Day. So you're not just asking for money on the day, but you're reinforcing all the great work that you're doing, the impacts of your programs, outcomes in the community, um, and work on work on sort of getting that stuff scheduled and laid out in advance. So almost every day you're you're touching your public with something about Library Giving Day and, and creating um, momentum for uh, why they should actually make it a gift on the actual day. Ooh, I like that. Almost something like 10 days out, you could start a did you know campaign. Uh, yeah. Did you know that, yeah, our library does this, nine days out a new post, eight days out a new post. Did you know that we do this? You know, hashtag library giving day. Um, I think that's a great idea. Okay, let's see what else we would recommend. This is wonderful, such a wonderful resource, and I'm really proud of this. Um, step five, we want you to access free creative elements on librarygivingday.org, or you can contact us at Carl Bloom if you need some help with that. But what you see here are a series of emails that you can download and adjust and uh, make them appropriate for your library. Um, and then I also want to spend a little time about the, the red circle where it says match my gift. Brian and I both have really strong feelings about um, if your library is able to get a matching gift around Library Giving Day, you're going to see your success really increase. And so to talk about a match gift, and sometimes people call this a challenge gift, it could be $500, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 from your board or another foundation or um, a local company that says they will match all gifts dollar for dollar up to $5,000. Um, now, I do use the number 5,000, but remember, if you're a small shop and your match gift amount is 500, then it would become all gifts match dollar for dollar up to $500 on Library Giving Day. And that's really when you're going to see some momentum build. And Brian, what do you think about matches and how does Seattle Public Library Foundation use them? 
Yeah, I, I think they're they're really essential. I think um, the reality of our fundraising fundraising world, especially here in Seattle, is that matching gifts are are really an incentive. We hear from donors all the time that they want to wait to give until there is a match. And the other thing I'll say about um, uh, a matching matching gifts is um, it's a great opportunity to work with an existing donor you might already have. Uh, maybe, you know, let's say you're a small shop and they're giving at the $500 level. You could approach them and say, hey, would you like to um, donate at the $1,000 level? And um, we'll use your gift as an incentive. And then chances are you're going to have a successful campaign. It's a great way to report back to um, your, you know, let's say your major donor that you've had a successful campaign, but it really does motivate um, the public to feel like they're making twice the impact that they have. And if you ever have, um, you know, if you're not familiar with using a matching gift strategy, um, you could always ask Carl Bloom, you could uh, email me directly and, and ask questions about the mechanics of how a challenge match works. Um, um, and we would be happy to share our our experiences because um, it really does help drive uh, revenue. It builds excitement around the campaign. And um, there are so many creative ways to find your matching gift donors, whether that's a company or an individual donor or uh, you know a collection of your board. Um, if you have board or volunteers, you might ask each of them to 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 you know designate their annual gift to your match, um, and so I think you can find some really creative ways to to source that matching gift, and then ultimately it'll really pay off with a um, with urgency to your public to to help the library, which I think they're naturally inclined to want to do anyway. So this just amplifies that impact. Yeah, excellent points. And I'm really glad that you brought up that some donors actually wait until the match gift to, to give their donation to make more impact. Uh, I'd like to add, turn it to the audience and ask you um, if you're comfortable chatting in, in the chat box, let us know how many of you have used matches before. We would love to know. And do you have any great strategies? Uh, I may be able to read them uh, on our call right now and share them with the group. So if there's any, any way you've been able to get a match of any size, anything creative, we'd love to know. And I think everybody else would love to know that too. Uh, so as we wait for those to come in, I'm gonna go on to the next slide and we may come back with more match gift information. Uh, okay, so again, just another piece of step five, the free creative elements that are on Library Giving Day. Um, these are some posters that you can put up in your library, kind of a grassroots. Um, also, the photo on the right is care of our own uh, Ansel Adams or Brian, on, who's you know on the call with me today, and his beautiful photography. But um, you can see that that this is two completely different versions of of this poster, and each of the libraries using them can make them their own. So, uh, Brian, I think you guys integrated your own photo into the one on the right. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And and again, we're going to probably use the same material again this year. So all of our work from last year is just, just going to carry over and be easier as we enter the campaign this year. Excellent. Wonderful. Good point. Okay, so let's go into some 2019 testimonials and examples. I think examples are really important. We know you want to see what other libraries have done. So some testimonials. We've got four right here, but we heard from a number of libraries. Uh, so one library said they had 40 new online donors, and for them, that was very good and successful, and we're really proud of you. So congratulations, Gwyneth. Uh, there was another that said they raised over $5,000, and they hadn't really been uh, sure of what to expect. So that was wonderful. And then another said they had a record amount of funds come in on a one-day period, and that was really good. And, and that was from new donors and increased giving levels from current and lapsed donors. Um, and that. Pierce County Library did have a matching gift, so that's excellent. And then another said they had 200 new prospective donor leads through their social media campaign. So you can see the success really is comes from a, a bunch of different ways. Perhaps you just want to touch more people on social media, and that is a measurement of success. And so we're really proud of these libraries. It's great. Oh, someone has written in and said, with regard to matching gifts, they asked their friends of the library group to do the matching donation. They made an annual donation anyway, so they moved the timeline of their gift announcement to promote 
uh, a matching gift for library giving day of all gifts $50 and, and over. And I, I really like that. So what they're saying is they asked the, the friends of the library to do the match and, and then they directed that around library giving day and they would match gifts that were $50 or more. So that's actually encouraging people to give larger donations. That's pretty good, fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about the different channels that were used in 2019. When we asked the libraries that participated how they promoted and fundraised around Library Giving Day, they said they used combinations of you know direct mail, email, social media, things like that. But social media is really very a very powerful and commonly used tool. Um, Brian, do you have any thoughts on the different channels that can be used and what you do? Yeah, I would say, you know, harness all of your channels. I mean, w when we did Library Giving Day, we had an element of direct mail. Um, we had uh, a lot of social media, which uh, we received a, a lot of help from Carl Blumann in terms of creating our digital strategy and little videos that, that I was blown away by how many views we had on, on these little videos, which again, credit to Carl Bloom for helping to create. But we also um, did things like the posters and the branches. We um, did um, some some info, sort of our internal website at the library. We um, did a lot of posts to our um, 700 uh, library system employees, encouraging them to share our social media. Um, so I would say, you know, go beyond your usual channel channels of, you know, not just think of this as as um, uh, uh, you know, a social media campaign or an email campaign, but uh, think about it holistically in any way that you typically promote opportunities for philanthropy, um, go there. And uh, I think you'll see that at, at collectively it's pretty powerful and you create a lot of awareness um, as you tap into all those different resources that, that, that you might have or you might create if you don't have them. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Oh, wonderful examples. So here are three libraries that incorporated Library Giving Day on their own websites. Uh, some of them downloaded the logos, which you're also able to do on the librarygivingday.org site. Some put in uh, some blurbs uh, to tell the public what Library Giving Day is. So this is really great and also something that you can just use again year after year, maybe some slight updates, but uh, very strong examples. And uh, Brian, tell us a little bit more about this one from Penguin Random House. Yeah, I think so. One of the opportunities with Library Giving Day, again, this is a, a, a movement that we're trying to create um, amongst libraries, but there's also opportunities for us to expand um, engagement with um, library partners and corporate citizens and people that you know do care about libraries. So um, this is an example of um, Penguin Random House hearing about Library Giving Day and helping to sort of amplify um, the message to the broader community. So they created some promotional materials to help um, spread the word. So again, it's 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 not just about uh, Library Giving Day is a campaign. It's a movement. It's like Giving Tuesday, and it's something that we can all be proud of and leverage um, in our community. And this is a great time to share a comment that's come in from another library. Uh, now they're talking about um, how they got their match gift, but it is exactly what you're saying right now, Brian. So it was a 10,000 match from a local retailer that was really well known in the town that they're in. And the retailer also helped spread the word. So kind of dual purpose and incorporating um, the contacts that you have in the outside community to help them market Library Giving Day. So thank you so much. That was great. So if you in your own town have a super famous retailer or shop that everybody knows about, yeah, get them involved and get them to help out with the match gift. Absolutely. Okay, and Brian, uh, please tell us about this King County Library library gift. Yeah, so, so King County Library System is um, uh, sort of surrounds the Seattle market, and um, they are great partners of ours um, on a number of different fundraising fronts. But again, they they participated along with the the counties around us and and just south of us. But what what King County was able to do quite successfully was um, um, 
plan a holistic campaign where they started by um, building the partnership and building the belief in library giving day. So they started with sharing this with their, their leadership. They briefed their managers. Um, they got their library marketing team involved. And so they talked with their social, me social media managers and their web managers. They worked with the branches to uh, encourage sort of decorations. And um, they also worked on, on thinking about after the campaign, how they would um, thank and show appreciation to the donors. So they created something really cool called uh, a gratitude brigade. Um, when it came to their matching pool, Again, um, Seattle uh, and Washington are very, uh, very much match focused because we have a lot of philanthropic um, organizations that use that strategy. Um, they sent a direct mail to some of their mid-level donors. So they found a donor segment that that they wanted to, to sort of activate. And so they targeted donors that were giving anywhere between two, $250 to $1,000. And they ended up raising uh, $19,000 from 46 donors to create that that match pool, which they then promoted um, on their website and um, through their email marketing um, to blast out to their, their um, constituents and their donors. So they had a, a really uh, strong click-through rates and open rates on their e-blasts, and they ultimately raised about $44,500 um, from 250 donors. So again, really strong average gift um, uh, uh, $170 compared to their their typical $95, um, and then their average new donor gift was $91 compared to about $62 through um, direct mail. And I know in Seattle um, for our holiday campaign and our Giving Tuesday campaigns, um, we saw incredible increases in both our the number of new donors we acquired through digital strategies as well as um, the amounts were increasing. Um, for their gifts. So we're kind of in a, you know, uh, this was an example of a really successful campaign that they created. But, um, you know, this year, 2020, I think we're, we're in a pretty solid, good fundraising climate. So the time is, um, the time is right to, to um, see if you can replicate some of these strategies. Oh, excellent point about the climate. And tell us a little bit more about the social media side of things. Exactly. So King County, um, you know, they they had a great connection to a phenomenal quarterback, uh, Russell Willis, Wilson, who I'm sure all of you admire uh, greatly. Um, but he's a quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, if you're not a football <laughs> fan. And, um, you know, he they were able to leverage their connections with Russell Wilson, as also with Melinda Gates, um, to really kind of amplify the library giving day meshes. So as you'll see on this um, tweet from Russell, it's promoting library week. It's promoting Library Giving Day. It's promoting Give to King County Library System. Um, it's pr pr promoting Russell Wilson's foundation. So it's a great example of um, you know helping helping to amplify the message both on um, Facebook and Twitter. Um, and uh, they also did um, they also did a campaign. Uh, where they um, gave away two tickets to their Literary Lions Gala um, uh, for anybody who I think s submitted some sort of, they had some sort of contest as well. Um, so they were thinking creatively about how do we engage donors in maybe a little bit different way um, to, 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 to promote some sort of call to action with an incentive. In this case, the incentive was um, tickets to their um, amazing Literary Lions Gala. So there's lots of things you can do to sort of build momentum around Library Giving Day and um, excite people about participating. And again, social media and contests are, um, uh, and celebrity engagement are, are just uh, great examples. And this is a good time to say to the audience, we would like you to name drop. So if there is anybody in the audience that wants to leave us a message saying, have, you know, who in your community is a well-known person that you could reach out to, send us those names. We're curious and we'll just read them right now and, and it would be a lot of fun, but you know, get those juices flowing. Perhaps there's a local um, sportscaster or, you know, a newspaper writer or reporter or, you know, basics like that or maybe you live in a fun city like Nashville and you have lots of famous people um, but if you've got anybody and you want to name drop let us know 
let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so something that we want to hammer home, we've really talked about a lot of fun components, but this is where we really need your help. If you do end up participating in the campaign, and we really want you to, we need your results. So please don't think of the campaign concluding on April 23rd. The campaign really concludes after you send us results. That, that's the final step. Um, we need them. We need them for goal setting. You know, we've talked with you today about how much money was raised, um, you know, nearly $750,000 in our first year. But we can't tell everybody how much giving day library giving day has grown if we don't know um, how much you raised so we need it for goal setting we need to also know what your goals were and how you achieved them um, we need to learn from each other we've given great examples of libraries that had strong campaigns um, and we need you to share what you've done so that we can share that with the wider audience um, we need to know what the collective impact of library giving day was you know one day we may look back and think 2019 was really great, but look how much we've grown in the last 10 years. And now, you know, this is also a national day of giving. Um, and we need proof, proof that Library Giving Day is a successful, viable day of giving. We need it so that your internal staff and stakeholders get on board and so that you can go to people in the community uh, who are your partners and sponsors and you can get them to support you. Um, and so with that, I want you to very much be on the lookout for our post library giving day results request. That is such an important part of everything. Um, and I want to thank, you know, Brian and Seattle Public Library Foundation were really great at sharing their results last year. So thank you for doing that. You bet. You bet. The other, the other uh, thing, that, if I could just add what? to that in terms of the importance of sharing results, I mean, you know, uh, I was telling Christine a little bit earlier that I used to work for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and you know that was a national organization that that had clout with big partners like Macy's and and um, Alaska Airlines and Subaru and whatnot. But um, you know, as, as we build Library Giving Day, and we can demonstrate how powerful public libraries are to to benefit the community, this might open the door for us to be able to go approach potential national sponsors. Um, when we launched Give Big Day in Seattle years and years ago, our first giving day, we had great support from uh, Microsoft and some of our larger corporate citizens. But um, you know, I think if we're gonna ultimately attract kind of large national partners to support Library Giving Day, it could sh it would be really helpful to be able to demonstrate that proof of concept and build on that year over year. Thank you, thank you for that, Brian. Um, so there are just some key takeaways. Even though we've talked about some big names like Russell Wilson, and we've talked about talking, you know, national sponsors and things like that. If you take away anything from this entire webinar, it's that Library Giving Day is for you. It was made for you, um, whether you be a, a small shop or a big shop, but specifically for smaller shops. We want you to do whatever you can. Grassroots fundraising is fantastic. Get your community involved. A $500 match gift is a better than no match gift. That's a really strong amount of money. Um, so don't ever sell yourself short. This day was created for you. Um, and then we want you to start planning today. Things will be much easier if you do. So go download that toolkit. And actually a little birdie is telling me that a number of you have downloaded the toolkit during this webinar. So thank you so much. And we're really glad to see that. Um, and then have an internal kickoff. And remember to gather your key internal stakeholders and ask them to participate and advocate on your behalf. Um, and do not be deterred in any way. If you have a small campaign this year, just keep building, like Brian said. Um, reuse a lot of your uh, fundraising and marketing materials next year, and then share your results. And, and Brian, do you have any final thoughts and takeaways? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, one one thing about Library Giving Day is, um, you know, I, typically there are, are there are two seasons of giving for most organizations in the spring, in the fall, and obviously in the fall it's pretty jam packed with holiday giving and Giving Tuesday. Um, you know, here in Seattle we do a lunch in in luncheon in um, in March. Uh, then we're going to do Library Giving Day, and then we also still participate in our Give Big Day. 
And you might think, oh, well, are, are we over asking? Do we reach that point where we're oversaturating our market? Um, and the reality is, is um, no, we're not. I mean, we increased our donations 29% last year. Um, and we did that by adding Library Giving Day on top of Giving Tuesday uh, and Give Big, our local community campaign. So as long as you're careful about um, segment, segmenting your donors and honoring donors who have already given, we find that people um, uh, are, are not, um, they're very forgiving of being asked multiple times um, for support because library support is so strong. So another good example of how much people love libraries. In Seattle, we had a levy last year which raised you know two hundred and thirty million dollars. So we asked our voting public to um, to increase their own taxes, and um, seventy six percent of the voters agreed to do that. And you know I can't think of another cause uh, that is so important to the public. Um, that, that that can garner 76% of uh, of a public agreeing to tax themselves. So I think people, the bottom line is people do love the libraries. It's one of the greatest democratic institutions. Uh, and this is an opportunity for you to, to extend another invitation uh, for them to make a gift. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that um, the, the community will, will respond in favor. I, you make such a good point, Brian, about people generally being okay with being asked. And I would say, as a person that works for a, a fundraising agency, and we talk to many different kinds of nonprofits all around the country, I the question I hear most frequently from nonprofits that are are they're curious about fundraising around Giving Tuesday and then adding on something like Library Giving Day, but they they do worry. You know, are we asking too much? Absolutely not. When you think of libraries and other nonprofits of all sizes, they're asking multiple times a year. So don't be afraid. And then I would kind of ask you yourselves, you know, do you remember what you were doing in early December? How many times you were asked for money? Um, by April, someone may have very much forgotten, but even if someone doesn't make another donation, um, it's an additional touch point and continuing to communicate with your donors is the most important thing you can do to, to reinforce the fact that their money is important to your cause. So um, yeah, do not be afraid to throw more giving days in there. It's completely fine. The, the other thing I'll add, Christina, is that for, for us, um, Library Giving Day has been another way to help build a culture of philanthropy within our library system. Uh, we saw numerous employees get behind it, uh, even more so than our some of our other um, campaigns, because it was a campaign for libraries. Um, and it was sort of this national movement, which they they got really excited about. So, and I think, you know, when when you have a successful campaign like this, it helps reinforce to your your branch employees and and their families and people connected to your library, and and you can really illustrate how how much um, just that little bit of extra marginal investments that may come from your foundation or your friends, um, and that funding above and beyond what public support provides really has a, um, a profound impact on your community. At least it, it certainly does here in, in Seattle, and I know our friends at King County feel the same way. So um, I, I encourage you to, you know, again, these campaigns build on one another and, um, I think you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised by how positive the experience is for your whole system. And actually, Brian, we've got a question from the audience. They said, could you expand on how you used Library Giving Day to build that culture within your own library system among staff? So more sure. details. Yeah. So um, one of the things we did, um, I mentioned earlier about sort of building that that um, campaign of social media leading up to Library Giving Day. So we've done a lot of storytelling, um, going deeper into the impact of library programs. 
Um, so we weren't just asking for money, we were helping to create um, a lot of pride about the, the types of programs that we're, there were, be, were supporting from world language story times to ESL classes to some of the innovative things that the library is doing, like having a community resource, resource specialist social worker on our staff. So we provided a lot of good examples of how foundation funding was making an impact on our community. And I do believe that our, our, our um, the SPL team members are really proud when they see their work being um, amplified uh, on social media. But we also did things like we had, um, you know, contests around if they share our posts. Um, we had, um, in the past, we've done donut parties, like in the morning of Library Giving Day. We've um, talked a little bit about uh, we we gather our staff before the library opens. We give donuts to everybody. We have places for them to make donations if they would like to make a donation. We encourage them to share our media. Um, so we really um, we talk about sort of what our investments are doing um, for their programs. We make help them create a sense of pride in their product that they're delivering, um, and then we encourage their engagement. And that really happens probably a month leading up to library giving day, as well as after mm -hmm. we share the results, we share the excitement, we share what we were able to accomplish together. I'm so glad to hear you talk about some of just the, the smaller, more simple things that anyone can do, like donuts. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. really great. And donuts are really great in general. So, <laughs> yeah. um, some. Somebody did ask a question, and I wanted to say we would love to take your questions now, so please send those to us. We want to know what you're thinking, and, and your questions will help us in the future. Um, we're going to put a lot of them on our Frequently Asked Questions page of the website so that it's really a comprehensive resource. Um, so let's see. So someone asked uh, if they wanted to run Facebook ads, what kind are the best? Uh, video ads typically do really well, and if you if you have the some kind of like promotional video that you could narrow down into a 15 or 30 second video, that would be really impactful. That's kind of an advanced strategy, but you can also post videos on your own Facebook page and, and that would just be seen by your own followers, but you could always do paid ads. If you do have a question about that, feel free to send me an email at Christina at carlbloom.com and I can tell you more about that. Um, someone says, we used PayPal Christina, last year. It's, oh, yes, please go ahead, Brian. I, I just want to jump in and offer a little bit of a commercial for Carl Bloom because they we worked with them on our fourth quarter campaign and we gave them a sort of a hodgepodge of uh, various videos and they cut it down into this one minute video that was just pretty, pretty incredible, a series of three one minute videos um, that were were pretty incredible. Um, and I think collectively we had over 14,000 views on those videos. So, um, you know, if you, again, this is, uh, this is Brian giving a commercial for Carl Bloom, but even if you don't work with uh, Carl Bloom, um, uh, you know, find, find some resources in your community that can help you transition into um, the digital space. Um, because it really, I think that's where philanthropy is going. And if you, you know, sometimes you have to spend a little money to make a little money. And um, this is a case that, you know, once you have a donor year over year, it'll be a lot easier to get them to, to return. And again, you'll have those assets in perpetuity. Um, so um, I would just encourage people to think long term about these campaigns and what you're investing and how you're, you're building your sort of fundraising muscle. Well, thanks so much for that, Brian. I really appreciate that. And I um, I hate to inundate your inbox, but it might be a really great example if somebody just wants to see how the video is built out and um, just the way it looks to get your own inspiration. So people can email you, um, yep, you if bet. they want to see it. Is that right? Yeah. Yep, okay, sure. great. So we have a couple of questions about online giving for smaller library systems. And, and what I want to say about that is a few are saying they use PayPal. Um, some are saying that they don't have a way to give online. Um, and 
is asking if you can still effectively run a campaign if you're asking people to come and donate in person. I think that you very much can. Um, and perhaps one of the things you do is expand the length of library giving day. And, and this is something that can be done and maybe should be done in general. You know, instead of asking people to come in one day and make a gift, if you're a smaller system that needs to physically receive the gift, try a 10-day campaign. You know, please come in anytime between April 13th and April 23rd to make a donation and we'll give you a button or something along those lines. Um, Brian, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I, th I think that's a great idea. I mean, when I was with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, we had sort of what we called the Wish Star campaign, where you'd go into your local U.S. bank branch and, and you know, pay five bucks for a star that gets put up on the wall. You could do that in your branch. But um, I would also say that, you know, digital fundraising is the future. Um, and uh, we will always probably benefit from direct mail, but it is it, there are some really great tools that are online, um, like we just adopted the Classy platform, and there's Click and Pledge, and there's lots of other tools. Um, and it, it could be a cost and, and laborious to sort of get that up and running, but again, once it's up and running, you're set to go and you can build on these campaigns over and over and over again. And, um, you know, you could use Library Giving Day as a case to go to your library system to ask for the resources you need um, to be able to uh, invest in projects like an online giving platform because it will pay dividends um, year after year after year. So my, I guess my advice is take that jump, step into it, um, work it out, and um, I think you'll benefit um, many times over in the coming years. Yeah, and to jump on the, you know, do uh, make sure you have a way to raise funds online. While direct mail is very much the workhorse of fundraising, especially during the holiday season, we know for sure that direct mail drives people online to make a gift. Um, here's a good argument if you need to get the support of other people internally to, to get an online giving platform. If you were to receive a, a catalog or a magazine or something like that in the mail and you saw, you know, a shirt or a pair of shoes or something like that that you really like, you would most likely not rip out that perforated uh, sheet in the middle of the catalog and send in what you want. You would go online and do online shopping. So for a large majority of the people that you're asking for money, they are going to take that direct mail letter and they're going to go to your website to make a gift. So, you know, the more channels, the more ways you can get people to make a gift to you, the better. Um, if you're limiting yourself to just giving in the branch or just um, sending out, you know, a year end mailer or something like that, I think that, um, online giving is really something that you you need to do and i know it's easier said than done for some of the the different size groups that we're talking to today um let me see oh you know someone had a really great suggestion they said they have used their local community foundation to accept online gifts on their behalf so partnerships can help too uh okay i let me see, does anybody else have, let's see, we've got one more question. Um, and Brian, this might be a good one for you. Uh, we have a library foundation. Can they be the ones to implement Library Giving Day in support of our library? What do you think? I, I absolutely think so. That's our situation here in Seattle. So we are a completely uh, independent foundation um, and all of our gifts uh, support the library. So. Um, Absolutely, 100%. Okay, great. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and let's see. Oh, Brian, uh, sorry, one or two more questions are now coming in. Um, Brian mentioned Click and Pledge and something else for software. What was the other one? I think you were talking about Classy. Yeah, so, um, you know, there are a number of um, vendors that can help you uh, set up a uh, your own giving page. I think two of the Click and Pledge has been around for a number of years, and a lot of people use them. Um, we in, in Seattle, we're in the process of using a new platform called Classy, 
Um, and uh, there are also, uh, we've used Luminate Express as part of the Razor's Edge package. So there are a number uh, of different platforms. Our library system, we had, um, uh, uh, Seattle Public Library had a, an opportunity for people to pay fines and they added a, a, a donation option using PayPal. Um, and we received over 1,500 donations um, annually, uh, mostly of the $5 range by just having that PayPal site on there. So um, you, you, know, you obviously want one main landing giving page, but there, are, there, are, there might be other opportunities for you to, to use other systems. I think the key is always to think about what that donor experience is like and make sure it is seamless and make sure it whatever you choose is mobile friendly. So a lot of people, you know, Seattle is a very much a, a big bus commuting town. So we would make sure that our emails hit at 7.30 in the morning when half of Seattle is sitting on their bus um, commuting into work. Um, and we want that our giving site to be sort of mobile friendly and super easy and, and a really good um, giving experience. So I think it is worth it to, um, to invest a little bit in implementing a giving system that, that works for you and meets your, your needs, but also really important, meets your donors' needs and allows them to be able to give in the way that um, is easiest for them. Yeah, I, I agree with you about the, you know, the uh, making sure that there's a good online giving process. And, and to everybody listening, I would say if you do have a way to give online, um, we do, we recommend doing what we call the grandma test. And that's um, <laughs> give your, your mother or grandmother, but give someone who is not as familiar with a, a cell phone give them a phone and try to get them to make a donation online and see how easy or clunky your process is. Um, if you do not need a ton of information on your giving form, you know, you probably don't need Mr. or Mrs. You probably don't need a suffix. Um, you probably don't need, you know, where did you first hear about us or would you like to, you know, um, learn more about things every single piece of information that you ask for on your donation form means that you're extending the amount of time someone needs to you know put in to give you a gift people want to give a gift immediately they want to feel good and they want to walk away so i would say yeah do the grandma test and it will really open your eyes to how difficult your giving process might be um so yeah. and then brian any final thoughts yeah, the other the other thing I'll share is just, you know, we are we are all very fortunate in that um, you know, most of the time we don't compete with our other jurisdictions. You know, we're all in our communities, we're embedded. People give to us because they live in in our communities. So that means we're not, you know, I'm not in competition necessarily with the San Diego Public Library Foundation. Um so that being said, I can call up San Diego and say, hey, what are you what are you doing? What does your giving page look like? Or I can call up Toronto or Chicago. Um, so, you know, try to find a library that that might be in, you know, your same size and ask how they've done things. Um, part of our reasoning for creating the the library um uh the International Library Fundraising Conference is so we can get together and share ideas. So lean on other organizations that are close to you, that are similar to you, uh, and ask for their support and guidance. And, you know, I think everybody is always willing to share information. So there are lots of resources out there to help you um, elevate your efforts. And ultimately, we'll lift all boats um, through through efforts like Library Giving Day. Excellent. Well, I really, really want to thank you all for attending. And I, Brian, thank you so much for participating. If you have any questions at all, please um, email Brian or myself. Um, we are here to help you. We want Library Giving Day to be successful. And again, know that this was recorded and it will be put on the librarygivingday.org website. We encourage you to go to that site and spend some time, download the toolkit, uh, reach out to us again with any questions. Brian, thank you so much. Everyone, thank you for attending. And with that, we're going to end the webinar and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye now.